Hello, my friends. Welcome to another episode of Last Epoch. My name is Wilfred. So, um, there are about two hundred hours I've spent playing this game since uh, the one point zero launch, and I would like to share with you my thoughts on the end game because that is uh, that's one of the hottest topic on this game, like uh, what to do when you when you get to the level cap and beyond. So, I would like to do a video sharing my thought on what I think the end game of Last Epoch is uh, in today's uh, build and also a uh, contrast to the some of the major titles out there as well um, some are some are really uh, good end game content and uh, but bear in mind that this, these are the games that have been around for quite a number of years so they have time to mature into a you know, better product over time so now the what you see here in this video clip at the back of this video clip is what I normally do if I have uh, half an hour to burn uh, or play, so I'll log in, uh, play, uh, pick a monolith that I've, uh, I'm farming for uh, with the, one of the highest kind of like corruption that I'm comfortably uh, doing. In this case, it's 300 plus. And uh, then I'll spend half an hour in a, on a matured timeline to get to the boss. And before, before the boss, I would go to the observatory, pick up some of the prophecies um, that, that could further enhance my uh, chance of getting the items that I need uh, and I, I'll just finish up the boss in uh, there about half an hour so uh, and then the, the loop can repeat again on the same timeline again again and again and yeah that is basically my game loot, uh, loop now so first thing first right I would like to contrast into one of the most recent game uh, just being launched I think that's a fair kind of like assessment because uh, Diablo 4 has been uh, launched uh, for quite, quite a couple of months i think a lot of you may have experienced the various kind of seasons as well and i always feel that um diablo franchise is built around the efficiency kind of uh, philosophy so as, as you know the game better you're getting more and more efficient in doing things and you feel great being efficient in doing things um the a lot of uh, complaints are on the loot and inventory management of diablo 4 but actually the the bigger problem i have with it is really the what I deem as the combat versus non-combat ratio. Uh, so the amount of time that is spent uh, in combat, you know, actually playing, interacting with the game, rather than uh, the non-combat ones, like for example in Diablo 4 is uh, mount up, go to another place, uh, wait for the uh, like the well boss, uh, you, you know, you kind of get to a place, you wait for a couple of minutes, uh, within less than a couple of seconds, the boss is down, loot, go back to town, uh, mount up, go around, um, maybe maybe salvage it, sell it, or upgrade it, I don't know, what, whatever you want to do with it, uh, but you, there's a lot of time that you spend just bouncing around various kind of like um, uh, places, and uh, the town could be different as well, so the placement of all these vendors are different, but however, if once you are familiar with the with or various kind of town, then you become better in uh, in getting it faster. So I think that that that, that is really kind of pay off on the efficiency kind of thing. Um, the the reward may be the same as well if you compare to say um a, a higher combat to non combat ratio games like for example Last Epoch. Um, maybe the world boss may in, in Diablo Four may drop a very nice items that um that you will spend similar time in in Last Epoch to just get something. Uh, in the end, but I think at the end of the day, it's what you value. Like um, you, you maybe have a lot of traveling or walking, uh, in, in Diablo Four versus in Last Epoch, they spend a lot of time just playing the game, um, interacting with the enemies. Um, there's nothing wrong with uh, Diablo Four. Uh, Diablo Four designed to allow you to mount up, travel, admire the scenery. The graphic is fantastic. I play games like uh, you know American Truck Simulator and Euro Truck Simulator Two as well, which majority of time I just travel from A to B and I enjoy the scenery and, 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 and randomness around it. So nothing wrong with that. But uh, it depends on whether it is the kind of game that you like or not. So. Um, and the Diablo 4 has a season objective, which is kind of important because um, last epoch doesn't have any cycle uh, objective at all. But the uh, the season objective is kind of like very kind of uh, at the end of the day, you, you get there, you don't get there, you get there, you get the uh, the, the title. But who, who really care about the titles when there are so many other hundreds of titles out there? And the only thing they really care is possibly the battle pass uh, for Diablo 4. Which, uh, if you get a pay kind of version to it, um, you you get some nice cosmetic uh, along the way. But the, uh, they don't want to make it too hard as well, because what's the point of asking you to pay a couple of dollar or even more for the accelerated uh, battle pass if they lock it behind such a 
uh, high difficulties uh, challenge when some people may not get it and they say, well, I pay so much for it. I didn't even get all the cosmetic that I, I need. So battle pass is kind of simple. Uh, objectives are simple. So D4 end game loop to me is, is just not so fun. Uh, but it is what it is. That's for Diablo 4. Now then you go to games like Diablo 3 that took many many years to mature. I thought Diablo 3 is a nice place when it comes to end game. In fact, the whole season journey is an end game. Getting to 70 level cap is uh, it's just a matter of um, less than half an hour. If you have friends, if not, then you know you spend maybe uh, a couple of hours or even more to for a weekend to get to level 70 and after that it's all end game so you go do bounty you push uh, rift you push greater rift and yeah, then you acquire the paragon which is kind of like it was an end game uh, before they kind of uh, set a limit to the amount of uh, number of paragon points that you have then I think but back then it was really the grinding towards the paragon points the grinding towards the dam the, the legendary dam the grinding towards the pushing higher Greater Reef and the uh, and the season objective was also quite robust. I would say uh, it can be challenging as well. Uh, solo definitely is a lot harder, but if you have friends or in a multiplayer can set up co-op set up, it's a lot easier to it's easier to get to the um, to the that to that um, season objective. But you know after after they've uh, stopped the whole season. Um, new season then they they, they recycle the, the old seasons and sort of like you know then then the mo motivation isn't there right because you want to have uh, new cosmetic items or just uh keep going with new mechanic but there, there aren't any so uh d3 i think in this golden era is pretty good i would say as an end game it's all about end game all about pushing all about playing with friends and the um but uh, too bad the season is gone so that that kind of like um, it's not something I would play, but the end game I enjoy. What about Warhammer 40,000 Inquisitor Martyr, a game that I play a lot, like, you know, maybe 800 hours, I can't remember uh, how, how long I played the game. And the uh, it, it had a really solid kind of season objective. It's harder than Diablo 3, but very so soloable. You spend there about, you know, maybe 80 hours, 100, 120, depending on how much you want to play, you get to the end kind of like, you know, like you finish the season, you you complete the season, you feel completed uh, by that, um, and the 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 pace to the level cap also pretty nice. Um, it is a little bit like the above four. It takes a while, but anything beyond level ninety is already uh, any any loot that you got beyond level ninety is already considered as end game items. Uh, it's hard to get any. I mean, it's kind of hard to get any item level beyond ninety. Uh, but it's nice. I mean, the the item level in in that game is, isn't that important. It's uh, is what you want what you want to do with the attribute or the affixes that matter a lot more so they they remove the kind of the hard dependency on oh, the, all your gears become obsolete and and you have to refarm everything at the end game it doesn't you know it's not like that um the crafting also pretty flexible as well uh definitely a lot more flexible than the uh than than all the games out there uh, even last epoch as well um, you, you can just keep changing the, uh, the the affixes. Of course, it costs you a little bit. After a while, you kind of like, okay, maybe it's not worth doing that. But I mean, there's a pretty pretty solid uh, uh, crafting as well. The uh, end game of that uh, Warhammer 40,000 Inquisitor Martyr is really about the Void Crusade uh, pushing, <clears throat> which is not unlike timeline. I mean, you look at the timeline, you have uh, last report, you have what there are about 10 timelines. I can't remember how many of them. And for Void Crusade, there's also a whole set of Void Crusade. Uh, that that you can complete different void crews. They have different kind of uh, end bosses, just like last report. Actually, very very similar to it. And uh, it is about pushing the difficulties through the tarot cards. Um, I think it's a little bit like Path of Exile, the maps kind of concept. Uh, you can put a card there, and then they make a make a dungeon more or mission more difficult, have more reward in some ways. So you can control the the affixes that come and um, come affect you as well. So it's a little bit of uh, um, it's a little bit. I mean, I think last epoch has it uh, with the with the monolith uh, and the randomness of um, you know, negative affixes against you. While for for the um, for the Warhammer games that I talk about, it's really the terror card kind of like um, uh, driven. So very similar. They make you so each mission, each uh, mission in in Warhammer game, and each uh, I guess mission in the last epoch is somewhat different as well depending on what kind of affixes that's against you so that is really solid as well i love the game warhammer 40,000 increases the matter unfortunately again that they have stopped the season after season seven um so the only thing that i look for i look for from for the game is a new class that's going to come up uh, and but 
but I mean, you know, you can play any season in the past, you replay it again. So uh, it is still there, but it's uh, for someone who have been playing so many hours in the existing, uh, in the last couple of seasons, which is the, the really good one, um, it's not something new. It's not something new. So I don't know. I may go back there uh, to play that. But I mean, the, the end game is pretty good for Warhammer game. I mean, that is a really, really good end game. I enjoyed it while, while it lasted. Then you go to look into some of this like an ARPG where but there's no season kind of like a concept to it, like Grim Dawn. So Grim Dawn is yet another very, very classic game where by the end game, in my mind, is really about trying out the different uh, multi-classing, multi-class or dual class combination and to take your build to, uh, to, to, to see how far you can push. Now, the great thing about Grim Dawn is that the, uh, it, 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 um, it allows a very flexible build experiment I mean, you can, once you know the mechanic, you can create any build that you want, just like a last epoch, really. Um, the last epoch also facilitate that, um, you know, build experimentation. But yeah, I think Grim Dawn is doing it better because there's so many more years ahead uh, compared to uh, last epoch. Um, the, uh, you, you, that there's a very defined kind of like milestone, right? So in, in last epoch, there aren't any milestones. They, they, you just keep pushing monolith to higher until a point whereby you, if you're bored with the build and your gear can't improve any more further, then you don't bother, you want to restart again. But the, uh, for the Green Dawn, the, um, you, there, there are different difficulties level um, and, and it is really about your character being able to conquer the, um, the difficulty level of, of that campaign. And the whole entire Grim Dawn is built around campaign as well. Everything, the end game is the campaign. The story is very deep and wide and you can influence the outcome of certain uh, quests as well. <clears throat> and you can do targeted farming as well. Targeted farming is also part of the campaign. So you do everything within the campaign. Uh, you try to farm you know, the gear that is relevant to your build uh, for a campaign. And, um, and and you don't necessarily have to farm the same area or same bosses all the time because different builds will require different kind of like, um, um, they call it imprint or monster imprint. And that will come from different part of the, the game, different bosses or different map. There's so many to choose from. It's very rarely you have to keep farming the same place just for the same thing, right? Uh, unlike say, last epoch, it's just a lack of legendary or unique, sorry, a lack of unique that that um, you know, you basically keep farming the same thing sometimes uh, for similar build. But uh, yeah, I mean, the Grim Dawn is, is very, very good. Um, it also, um, and the, yeah, I mean, I, I, I do enjoy Grim Dawn as an end game. The end game of Grim Dawn, like I said, is really about just experimenting different combinations. There's so many combinations out there. Um, I, I, I can't even dream of a day where I can experience all the combination. That would require a lot of time commitment, and that is the end game. That's a loop that we talk about. Um, then the second game I like to talk about the uh, also no season um, kind of like mechanics uh, mechanism, just like Green Dawn is Chronicon, and Chronicon is one of the very small indie company, well loved. If you look at uh, Steam, uh, they have really really high rating, and uh, and I think. They, they draw, I mean, Chronicon is a pixel art game, uh, but the gameplay is very, very solid. Uh, it, it's very, very similar to Diablo 3 in a sense, but do, they do it everything better than Diablo 3. Um, it's, uh, the crafting there is wild. It's the wildest of all the crafting that I've seen in any ARPG. You can basically create your very own um, primal engine if I use the D3 lingo. Uh, you can pick any affixes that you want. Of course, you need to craft for it. And then uh, you, you, use, uh, you keep playing to level up the affixes if, if it makes sense to you. So you need to keep leveling up the affixes until the, the highest possible. Uh, and that is, there you go, your primal engine. And guess what? If you say that, um, you know, I, I think I want to change my build, fine tune, I don't want create, I want something else. And you can do that too. You can wipe that off and just add another affix there and level again and try and see, mm, that is, is it better or is it not? It has a very uh, solid kind of like paragon system like the, um, the D3 that you can just uh, go infinite. You can just keep getting more and more points to kind of like incrementally uh, by, uh, by a bit slow in the imp improving your character. Uh, and you, there's also something called the Ancient Beast DLC as well that further uh, give you a pet that will enhance your whole end game journey to add way more kind of stats in various kind of like, you know, wild imagination that you can have to augment your build to be even higher. Uh, difficulty is high, uh, challenging as well, just like Diablo 3. Uh, they have this kind of like, um, you know, greater rift concept that you have to 
uh, rope light, you know, go 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 through the go through the uh, the dungeon uh, in a certain time and so on. So it's a very very um, and if you look at the the ratio of com combat versus non combat, right? This this is one of the highest one. Chronic Horn is you know you just keep playing, keep playing, and the loading screen is very short as well. Unlike say last Epoch, so it is a very solid game. Chronic Horn, I love it. Now, so where do where is uh, last Epoch when it comes to the end game? And I think that I've been doing a lot of thinking after I played like 200 hours on this game is that um, it is very much a target of farming for legendary crafting. And I think the concept is really good because, you know, unlike other games that once you get the items, um, uh, you may say, well, you know, uh, I, I, I got it. So, so that's it. That's my, that's my item. But the... Uh, but you have to keep farming for it because you do have different kind of like you know crafting. You can combine the unique to the exalted items to give you the extra one to four affixes that you can bring across from an exalted item into 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 unique. So you end up having to farm the boss. You need a lot of them. You need a lot of them to 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 sort of like do the crafting for legendary, and you need to keep farming for the exalted items as well because ultimately you want to be very targeted to be able to bring. You know, bring some of these very, very, very good affixes across from the exalted item into the legendary, and I think that is that is the end game to me. Now, uh, that's good and bad about it because if, like, for example, for my necromancer rough lord kind of build, um, I know that my boots uh, come from the uh, one of the monolith, the the one that you're seeing here, and the uh, I could get a claw from that boss as well provided that i can uh, bring some of the very nice affixes across otherwise don't bother um and the and for that blood frost uh, timeline i do have a chance to get the uh, armor as well which is relevant uh, for the chest item you know the low life chest item com coupled with the low life uh, uh, boots item and i could also farm for the for the for the ham as well which is the uh, the rough lord so all in all you know with a little bit of help of the prophecy I can definitely, uh, I can definitely uh, run this whole blood frost uh, for 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 infinity, right? Because I just keep running that until I get enough LP two, LP three, even LP four. I don't know whether it exists or not. I've seen LP three, by the way, the the legendary potential. Keep farming the three items LPs, and after that, keep farming the uh, the the exalted item that I can use it to to kind of like do the crafting, and uh, and that to me is the end game. Now the the problem I have with last epoch endgame is that if I look at my character, the necromancer, uh, the gears I have, a uh, majority of my gear has gaps to it. And I, I know what the gaps are. I mean, I, I think I got a nice belt, a nice uh, nice glove if you follow my um, my, my live stream. Uh, even the relics is arguably alright. I think that they're pretty good as well. I'm happy with the uh, with what, what it's doing. But the rest of the slots, right, um, especially for Amulet or Reigns, there's a lot of improvement there. But for some strange reason, uh, I, I haven't seen an um, uh, improvement of gear improvement for a very long time. I play many hours. Well, when I say many, it's not like 200 hours, but, you know, you can play like one hour, two hour, four hour, eight hours, and you don't see any kind of improvement uh, on anything, not even a Paragon uh, like Diablo 3. Uh, nothing, zero. Uh, there's no improvement to the character at all. And the uh, all, I'm hope, all I'm getting is just more and more um, affixes, kind of shards, and uh, maybe more runes, maybe more glyphs. Uh, but that's it. I, I don't have anything else beyond that. Um, and that kind of like I get it, right? ARPG when when you are towards the end of the end game, or at least to to the to the tail end of the end game, a late end game that that people say, uh, the the progression becomes slower and slower. But that is the problem of last epoch because it just become standstill uh, at least for my case uh, compared to other games I just named before um, um, okay Diablo 4 is also the same thing you know after a while it just feels stagnant and kind of like that that made me a little bit like um, what should I do next right uh, because of that and the um, and and that's one thing another thing is that um, there are just not enough unique the, to support on the end game build variety I think in my opinion I'm playing a necromancer. Maybe I'm wrong, but the, uh, I, I look at all these uh, legendary in and out every day. I don't really see anything beyond Wrath Lord, which is one of the best one out there. The you know the output is pretty strong. 
Uh, but for others, I, I try playing the zoo how of a necro with a whole bunch of summoner. Never work out that way. It's very, very poor. Uh, and I don't really have a lot of a legendary to support or actually unique to support other build varieties. So I end up playing the same thing for my Necromancer. I can't think of anything else for to play my Necromancer or don't want to because why do I want to regress into into uh, into another in an, into another kind of like build that uh, can't even do the monolith uh, corruption that I'm doing, for example. Um, and, and that brings me to a point whereby I think in some games, um, I can even say the Apple Forge. Well, the progression is kind of interesting, right? You start off with some starter build, and you progress into some build, and you go into some really OP kind of build. Uh, but the, for the last epoch, um, I, I I don't really see that progression, or even you know variety of that progression. So I I just found that maybe they just need more unique design um, to for people to keep playing uh, other other build options as well or maybe I just uh, wait for another cycle I'm not quite sure uh, and also like I said before there's no uh, there is no cycle objective so you make it like you know where does it end uh, um, I think that is that is really the question I ask myself um, you know is it just a number which is a corruption and if uh, if I do a higher corruption uh, would I be having better gear? I mean, I suppose it should, but in reality, I don't really see any progress. Maybe I need to push higher, but I, I don't know. So that is another thing. Um, do I want to op uh, create another character in last epoch? Probably no, not for this cycle. Because um, from, from level 1 again, all the way through the uh, story, and then through the monolith, a uh, normal monolith, and then when you hit, um, say, 70, 80, everything becomes very slow until 100. And then you still need to push the corruption for the, uh, for the monolith. Um, I, uh, I think the journey is a bit too long. I mean, I, I think in order to do a decent, decent character, and, and I'm talking about someone who, who may want to figure things on your own without having to research on the internet, just a copy a build that, um, that is working excellently for other people if you want to just play the game and learn and, and kind of like explore do a bit of farming uh, you probably need quite a number of hours I, I reckon it's probably 100 over hours to just bring the early end game to start enjoying the end game for a character and i don't think i want to do it uh, immediately after the necromancer i just want to take a break so what do i do what do i want to do from here um, maybe pushing uh, corruption a little bit higher to see if I got better exalted item. That's one of them. Another one is probably I'll just play online with my friends whenever my friend helps you to to boost up the XP because you know my corruption is three hundred percent XP bonus and I think that benefited my friend too because he said that oh seems that like I'm I'm leveling up three times faster when I'm with you. Oh, okay, th that's good. Uh, at least I'm contributing. So. So maybe just uh, play here and there with my friend online, try our maybe higher corruption, see if there's a better loot. But I'm I'm not holding my breath on this one. I think um, getting 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 gear upgrade from this point onwards is going to be quite tough. And if that is the case, then what? am i playing for i think that is the question but anyway hope you enjoyed this video um it's a bit long because i want to also share with you some of the other arpg i play and kind of contrast with the end game um of the last epoch so i i think um last epoch being a a new game although it's five years in development with the early access uh, I think the end game would need some tuning, right? And the tuning, maybe more things to do, more things to farm, uh, a better sense of progression, uh, a cycle kind of objective would be how I think this game can be improved. But all in all, I still love this game a lot. I'm hoping that this game will become better. So thanks for tuning in and I hope uh, to to play a little bit more for you guys on this game. And do drop me a note below in the comment uh, box uh, and uh, I'm happy to answer some of your queries, share your thoughts with me, and uh, and also my my in-game ID is in the comments below as well. Do connect with me, and we can play together. All right, see you next time. Goodbye.